Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I think with a little luck, we might have Rich Anderson as our guest today. Are you in the house, Rich? You bet. Good morning, Larry. How are you? Good morning to you, buddy. Listen, you've been kind enough to furnish this drought map of the United States. Can you explain to the folks what's going on with the crop and where this drought is focused? Well, well that, that comes uh, from the USDA. But basically, it's showing the, the the part of the United States where the major corn growing areas are, and that's kind of where all the drought is at with regard to corn. So we're talking about conditions that uh, we haven't seen since 1988. And wow. in 1988, corn went from 220 to up to 370. But let's yeah. think of it in terms of percentages. It went up about sixty-seven uh, percent <laughs> uh, yeah. in a very short period of time, and the beans are as bad as they've been since nineteen ninety-six. And yeah. you know, in ninety-six, the the beans went up big, and then they sold off, and then it went up big. Beans beans are a different crop. They, they're they're going to be made in August. The corn's made in July. The average daily moisture need of corn peaks by the second week in July. And that's why you typically see the uh, option implied volatility for corn to be, and, you know, the seasonality of the corn prices. And th the other part of that is that the Brazilian Sofrana crop becomes available for export and they start taking over the world's export market. So the bears have been focused about demand, which is problematic. As I would mentioned last time I was on, you know, China's focused on feeding wheat now. And actually, wheat, feed wheat to China is $50 a metric ton cheaper than corn right now and so those are the demand issues so there, there's going to be wide volatility in these prices there's chance for rain this weekend you know the forecast have been forecasting rain quite on several other occasions and then it just doesn't materialize and at this point we need significant rain um you know there's lots of areas Okay. Um, you know, Rich, as, uh, as stops is one of the possibilities. Do you rem do you remember 1988? We had picked up Bryce Gilmore at the LA airport, and we were driving through Santa yep. Barbara, and Lake Kachuma, and it was almost yep. empty because of the drought. And you said this thing will be filled up by next spring. Well, that's exactly what happened this year to Lake Kachuma. It was almost empty, and it was overflowing uh, just a few weeks ago. So you talk about cycles working. That's certainly what's happened. But, boy, this volatility. What happened in soybean oil yesterday, Rich, where it was down the limit? That well, hasn't happened in years. Right. So that was, that, that was the Biden mandate on renewable fuels that we are going to decarbonize the U.S., and so they were going to mandate renewable fuels, and the, the trade was looking for mandates to go up to six billion bushels, and they kept it, you know, marginally uh, a two percent increase, you know, from three million up two percent, and they're looking for six million. Uh, I'm, these crushers have spent five to six billion dollars on increasing the crushing capacity for the next and, and it, to do a pl crushing plant takes four or five years and these things will come online in 2025 2026 and all of a sudden the government says well i guess we're not going to decarbonize that quickly you know and all these billions of dollars you spend on these crushing plants maybe we won't need them yeah. <laughs> and that's that's what happened now the, the key point there yesterday is like when being oil was down the limit your listeners need to know that in the futures market, when you have options, you never 
unable to get out of the market because you can always synthetically get out of the market. And when you see a market that's limited down, you should check with your brokerage firm to find out what the synthetically it's trading at because often the highs or lows are made in the synthetic option market rather than actually on the futures. And you never actually see it on a futures chart. Uh, the best example I can give of that is when the wheat was rocketing to the upside at the beginning of the Ukraine war, the actual highs were made in the synthetic market. And all you're doing is taking a strike price and that's the money strike price, taking the, the price of the calls, the price of the puts, and, and uh, taking that differential and adjustments to the strike price to tell you where the market is actually trading. So if, if you were long being all yesterday and you needed to get out when it was limited down, uh, they, they would have let you out for three cents. Well, in the old days, they, in the pork belly pits, they just uh, give you the keys to a Cadillac, but you know <laughs> they don't have pits anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us, buddy. We'll have you on again soon. I hope you get some rain this weekend. I know we need it. We need it a lot of areas. There, there is a chance, though. It, it, so the guys are going to be nervous about being long or being short, either one over the weekend. So there'll be some volatility tomorrow too. Oh, boy, that's always the game. We love the volatility, that's for sure. And the weather reports, you know, the satellite readings come out three times a day, morning, noon, and night, and that's what causes these fluctuations in our day in these markets. So just use your technicals, control your risk, and you'll do fine. Now let's hope so. Thanks, Jim, for joining us, buddy. We'll see you in a couple of weeks, okay? Sounds good. Hey, Rich, you take care. Thanks for sending. Bye -bye. Please Bye. keep sending this drought map because folks like to see it, and I'll post it in the room for them so they'll be able to take a look at what we're watching. Okay, folks, uh, we've got uh, a guest coming up at the break. Will be the wolf trader himself, Shane Smullyan. And but before we get to that, I want to post a chart. You know, we always preach about certain patterns that we see in these markets, and I've been preaching this for the last four or five days, and that is. To watch that first 382 retracement in the uh, NASDAQ and the S&P, and I posted it in the room here. You can see that the high today was exactly 382 of the high we made last Friday. Uh, that completed an ABCD down there, and now if we get below that low that we made today, we're going to be looking at a pretty serious correction in the stock market, but that has to happen uh, in the next two days, otherwise we could still be in a rally mode. But right now, the high today in that NASDAQ has been spot on right at the exact 382 retracement. And if those of you that are not really excited about the 382 retracement, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a little summertime treat here and show you what the corn did today. Because if you did the same thing with the corn that you could have done with the NASDAQ, You'll see that the low today in the corn was exactly 382 of the low that we made back here before the drought started. You can see we bought it down there, got out a little bit too soon, but look, came right back down to the 382 retracement and has already rallied 11 cents. Now, this could be the larger ABCD move that Rich is talking about because if it doesn't rain across that Midwest, we're looking at a dollar a bushel higher in corn. Stay with us, folks. 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, folks, uh, we're going to start out today uh, this segment on Tesla. Well, we posted this yesterday where the high on Tesla should have been 276. Uh, sorry we missed it, folks. The high was 276.99. Uh, it opened uh, about $30 high, lower than that, down to 248 today. It's bounced back a little bit, but as long as we don't get above that 277, we should be looking at least a 25 to 38% retracement in Tesla. Uh, now, folks, we may or may not have made a major high in the market. We don't know that yet. We're only down uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, tomorrow, maybe, we will have to wait and see. And all of a sudden, I've got to turn this off because that is one of my neighbors. And uh, come on, come on, turn off. Come on. There we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, we don't know. The first key today was the fact that the NASDAQ made a 382 retracement and didn't go any higher. Now, if we get above that number in the NASDAQ today, if it starts making new highs and it's held up extremely well compared to the other ones, it's been up most of the morning. It's just the other indices that have been uh, that have been down on the day. So let's keep a keep a uh, remember that. The uh, S&P is down on the day now, uh, very, very slightly. The NASDAQ is still up, and we got the Dow Jones and the Russell are still down. Now, when we look at these charts, we got to remember two things. Sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't. And if you remember yesterday, we were talking about the potential of silver breaking a major, major low here. And I want to bring this up to you because we, in fact, did this today. I want to bring up here so you'll be able to see it. And those of you that follow the Trade What You See program, uh, we've been waiting for this low coming down in gold, folks. We're only $8 away now. Uh, gold's trading at 1923. And if you'll remember from the newsletter and everything else that we post, that number between 1915 and 1905 is going to be very, very, very important. And I want to bring this up so we can see it and you'll be able to take, uh oh, I've got to move it over just a tiny bit here. And then you'll be able to see it because if this fails, this is the key, because if it fails that 1905 number, folks, we're looking at something we haven't seen and that is a super major move down of another $100 
an ounce down to the uh, well, sixty dollars an ounce down to nine uh, eighteen fifty. So that number nineteen oh five has to hold. That's that's why it's really important. It's that smaller ABCD right in here, as you can see. We've been waiting for it for a long time. We covered our short yesterday in gold a little too early, but we always try to take a little out of the middle. You're never going to get the exact high or the exact low. So we did have a nice trade in that. Now we're waiting. Now it's not going to be coming in this today. It's not going to be coming in on Friday. We might get it on Monday. And remember, Monday is a big day because we had Stan Harley talking about this, and Stan will be our guest on Friday. And so that that is tomorrow. So don't don't miss that. And we got Shane Smolian coming up here in about a uh, few minutes, and he's going to be talking to us about uh, you know the reason why we're having this sell off if you remember we had those geomagnetic storms uh last friday and uh, with the market all that you know exuberance that we had and the the key was it had to continue into sunday and monday and it did the exact opposite and that told us that that abcd pattern that we were looking at in the nasdaq and i'll bring this up here i like bringing it up because when they work they're always very very pretty and the ones that don't work, I don't show you those. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Anyway, you can see there's a perfect ABCD there, just as mathematically as close as you can get. Each one swing was 2.73%. That's 270% of the AB leg. And there the other one was 2.78. That difference was 19 points in the NASDAQ. So that's why these markets are so very, very important. And I want to bring one other one up because this is the one that I think people are missing the boat on, and that is this ABCD pattern in the stocks of the Magnificent Seven. That's, uh, you know, the Tesla, um, Amazon, Google, uh, Meta, uh, have Broadcom, Tesla, and um, NVIDIA. And that's where that comes in. You can see the ABCD pattern. That's a three drive to a top pattern. And look at the rest of the market, how it's been hiding that weakness because everybody's been following this. That's why you look at the NASDAQ as a barometer, folks, because it's a barometer of what people are watching, even though they're not trading it. And sure, sir, certain people are. There must be a lot of people in it because they're going straight up like this. But when they try to get out, this could be a pretty severe correction. We believe that you're probably going to get a nice correction into the middle of July, and then we're going to see what the market has going for it. Because unless this market has a crash-type scenario involved in it, it's always possible. But what we want to watch is where that next buying opportunity will come in. You remember we saw that on June 4th. That was when we were down in this area right here when the S&P was trading at 4306. And from there, we went to 44.95. And so that's 180 handles in six days. That's the kind of move that you're hoping uh, to look for. So that's what we're watching. The key today is the fact that the NASDAQ was only able to make a 382 retracement. So far, it has not gone above it. That means if the S&P gets above 44 uh, 40, uh, 4220, uh, yeah, 40, no, 4228. If it gets above 4228, that would break a 382 retracement to the upside, and that means they're probably going to rally a little bit more. But until that happens, that is not going to be the case. So, those are the, some of the factors that we're watching here today because it's very, very important to follow what the market's doing intraday to give you an idea of what it's going to be doing tomorrow. That's all you can really do. Okay, remind ourselves of that. Very, very important. Okay, the other question that someone's asked is about the crude oil market. Hold on one second and I'll get this up here for us. Just give me a second here to get it up here. And we're still uh, heading down in crude oil. Let's get this up here. And uh, we thank our good friend, Mike Moore of Moore Analytics, who was on last Friday, suggesting we we're probably gonna go a lot lower. Uh, we got down to uh, 70 bucks a barrel again. We made that beautiful Gartley here at the beginning of the week, and we've been pushing lower uh, every day, and uh, we're down uh, quite a bit today. It's breaking uh, down another buck or so, so that's also moving in the, uh, the right direction. Folks, remember, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you don't lose, okay? So if you can understand when you first make a decision that you've made a wrong decision, the faster you recognize that, 
the better off you're going to be. The difference between a professional and a neophyte trader is the professional corrects his errors immediately. The neophyte trader will use the old hope and pray method. And that method maybe works in, in churches and synagogues, but it doesn't work in the Wall Street. It doesn't work on uh, Jackson Boulevard in uh, Chicago either. So you've got to be able to correct your mistakes yourself. Nobody else is going to help you. This much I'm 100% for, except for the folks in the trader's den. That's when you are you got some help in there with Mr. Z and some of his trading buddies that handle these markets pretty nice. So let's stay, take a break. We've got the Wolf Trader coming up. Shane Smolian will be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, with any luck, I think we have the Wolf Trader in the house. Shane, are you there? Is this Duke and Duke? 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19147. Send your cards and letters in. What do we got for us today, buddy? Well, we've got a lot to talk about today, actually. Uh, I want to bring up a statistic, actually. I, I was listening to Rich Anderson talk about the the wheat or the corn markets uh, in that drought of 1988. I remember that drought very clearly in 1988. So that's, that's, that's a serious drought that we're looking at right now. But I, I have some of these statistics, which I, I wanted to share with the viewers 
which shows corn uh, statistically. So statistically, uh, this is actually ne uh, next week's, but statistically today is the weakest day and then tomorrow is the strongest day. So that would be really interesting to see if we do get a higher move into the weekend as you were talking about, because uh, tomorrow statistically Friday, like right now Friday is the strongest day for corn. So I just wanted to point that out because I thought that was a, a very interesting uh, topic and, and the map that he's showing with that drought. I think that's, it's, it's very, it's fascinating. Thank you very much. It's good. To, uh, glad to see you're expanding into the, the real world of grains and oil seeds. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, I thought we'd start with the S&P 500 here. So I, I have a few headlines here. Uh, first of all, uh, bull market is confirmed. I, I've confirmed this a while ago uh, based upon what's going on with the Fed juice, and we've talked about this for some time going back to last October, uh, but that might be coming to a temporary top here, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, you know, we've been looking at long term positions on the NASDAQ. The Fed juice continues to be strong, and uh, most of these models had been turning bullish. I had been talking about that a few, a couple months ago, and so far, so good. Things are turning out pretty well. Uh, but at the very bottom here, the Wolf Trader Wave, uh, which is a new forecasting model I'm, I've been working on. Uh, is uh, forecasting a possible high here in the first week of July. So that would go along with what, you, what you've been talking about uh, as a possible pullback in July. It's very possible that we do get that. There's a lot of astrological activity in July. Uh, we have a Venus retrograde. We have the North Node changing signs. So there's a shift of energy in July. So we'll have to see what happens. It's not for sure that it's a high, but there's the potential for a high here. This is the first time that I'm uh, looking at a, a potential high, and I'll probably be looking to cover my NASDAQ long positions uh, after that first first week of July. Uh, so we're getting close. I mean, we're 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 closer than we had been in a while. Uh, if you look at the if you look at the NASDAQ here, we're still very, making some very nice moves here in this parabolic fashion. We're getting these series of uh, higher lows. Almost all of them are, are are sequentially higher here, which is still showing that we have a pretty healthy. Uh, bull market here. But the 50 and the 200, not only have they crossed, the spread is getting pretty wide here. So when that spread gets wide, uh, that can be an indication of a, pot a potential reversal. The, the S&P has, has been a little bit behind. It's been a little bit of a laggard, but it did finally break out. Uh, and we did, we were able to see that with what was going on with the Fed internals. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but the Fed internals actually forecasted that breakout, because uh, the Fed internals had a surge right here. It was about five days before the breakout. Uh, and so we were able to, to see that ahead of time, uh, which is always useful. Now, I, I want to talk about a theory. Larry, I've got a theory. Are you ready for my new theory? I'm ready. <laughs> uh, here's the theory. So the Fed juice, you know, when we, when we talk about the Fed juice, that's not a theory. That's that's just data that I'm getting from the Federal Reserve each day. I mean, that's those are hard numbers. But I do have a theory here on inflation. And I want to share with the viewers is, um, I you know, we're in the world of AI, artificial intelligence. Now, whether we like it or not, uh, I like to think of what happens now with the Federal Reserve is kind of like artificial intelligence. The fact that they can act so quickly now uh, really changes the models and the ways that we've looked at the markets. Uh, the Fed traditionally was a very slow acting agent. It would take months to, to act, to react to something. And now, you know, you have a bank failure on Friday and Sunday night, there's a loan facility open. And so things are moving at a faster pace now. And so I like to look at AI. So this is an AI model. It's called Trueflation. I, you know, that you can look this up online. What this is, is this is an AI model that tracks the CPI. Now, Trueflation has the CPI at 2.39%. Okay. Uh, the government just reported 4%. Now, be right before that, the government reported 4.9%. So there was a huge drop here. This government report, I think, is lagging the true inflation by about two months, something like that. So this is a, this is my theory. So just hang with me on this. But so far, as the true inflation has fallen, this it's just an AI model, artificial intelligence, real time, that the U.S. government report has followed it, and the, and so we've seen we've been seeing these plummeting M2 levels, uh, and so that really tracks uh, inflation when that when that declines, inflation declines. So if if the true inflation really is 2.39% right now, and remember, this is the rate of inflation. Now, your prices aren't going to go down at the grocery market. They're still going to stay the same. But what we saw before was a 12% versus almost a 2% now. So it's it was six times higher a year ago than it is now. So 
here's where I'm going with this. So everybody talks about uh, contrary and, you know, this and that and, you know, sentiment is here and the market's got to turn. I think the big sentiment, and this is my theory, here, I think the big sentiment is going to be a 2% report uh, in CPI. I think once we get that, that would be more of a contrary and turning point because uh, the Fed always talks about that. I mean, they beat that drum all the time. They say, oh, 2%, 2%, 2%. I mean, they just said it again yesterday, right? So if this last, so if I, I, tr I projected this out to, to go out to, it, this will hit 2% by August. Now it could be, could be before, but we're about six, five weeks away. We're at 2.39 according to this model. If the US CPI is really lagging this, and, and I'm tr it's lagging by about two months from what I can see. So 4% here is about two months behind. So we're in, uh, we're in June. I just checked my calendar. We're in June, June 22nd. And uh, that it hit 4% back into uh, April. So what does that mean? That means that I think if we hit this by August, the real rate will be 2%. If there's a lag of a couple of months, then that means the reported CPI could come in at 2% by October. I think that's the next real substantial chance at a high. Uh, not, I mean, July, could. I think we could have a little peak here. But I, I really think that if we get a headline, and that's, this is a big if, and this is not a perfect model. I'm just, this is a theory that I have. But I really think that if we get a 2% print as a headline, that that's going to be a very significant contrary indicator. In other words, people are going to say, oh, we've made it. You know, we've, the Fed has won all of this stuff. So that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and so I'm looking for that into like the October area. And then October, uh, the, the, the cycles, everything gets much more negative after the beginning of October. So I think, you know, if we put these, these pieces together, I think, that's a theory that I'm working on in terms of the inflation. So what do you think of that? Huh? It's a when theory. I look at that chart and I look at what I pay in a grocery store, I kind of question it. The other thing is, is that uh, when I look at these charts, my first question is, how is this going to help me make any money in the S&B? Okay. Show me how I'll, to do I'll give that. you two answers to that, to that response. Good response. First of all, this is the rate of increase. So your the prices are not going to come down. Okay, and uh, we we do see price gouging. So I see with, among different grocery stores, like the price of potatoes across the street of white potatoes, at my Publix, one ninety nine a pound, and it, if you go to Fresh Market, it's one nineteen a pound. So there's there's those differentials going on within the local grocery stores. But how is that going to make you make money? Well, because if we hit that two percent, if we do hit two percent, and the and the CPI report, a real CPI report, we're at four now. I think as a, what I'm saying is as a psychological indicator, I think that could be a topping indicator. That that's where I'm going with that. Okay, so that's how right. it can help you make money. I, I get that. I get that. Now I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Stay with us. We got some more. Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. 
TFNN, Educating Investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back with the WolfTrader.com. Please continue, my friend. All right, so now we're going to move into a model that I've created. So this isn't a theory. This is a model. The last one was my theory. But this this is a model uh, called the Wolf Trader Wave. So what this is, I, I basically took all the things that I, I liked about wave counting, all the things that I didn't like about wave counting, and I created a new model uh, to track what's going on with the S&P. So this is a weekly time frame. So far, this has been very good. I've even traded this down onto the 60-minute time frame with, with, the, with the, the bond, the long bond, 30-year. Um, well, basically, this has been in a buy since January the 6th here. So if you look at this wave up here, this was on January the 6th. And so according to this model, we will be coming up to a high right around this July the 7th. Now, that doesn't guarantee a high. The way that this system works is it has to confirm the down move for it to be a down move. Otherwise, it will end, it will terminate the wave and it will start a, a new wave up. So what I'm saying is this July 7th, this is the first real potential now for a high in the S&P that I've seen in a while uh, but that doesn't guarantee it. So we'll get into this in the new, you know, next month. Like we'll talk about this in depth. You know, what's going to happen between that 7.7 and that 7.14 is really going to tell us uh, what's going to happen going forward from there. So, but this is the next potential turning point here. So I do think uh, there is that potential here. And so I, I don't know if we're going to get up to that 46. Uh, this is the uh, 0.786. This will be the 46.16. I don't know if we're going to make it up there. But uh, that's the next Fibonacci level up there. And the S&P, when it, when it hits those levels, it tends to keep going to new highs. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But that's, that's what I'm looking at there. Uh, we had a, a trade here between the NASDAQ and the S&P. And so uh, you know, this, is, this is one of the things that I use. If I want to know which market to be in, I'm going to look at this Paris trade. And right now, it's, it's telling us that NASDAQ is the superior market. And then we were also looking at a pairs trade between the VIXI and the S and P, and this is this is I think this is more important than just like a VIX level. Like a, a lot of people look at VIX levels and they say, "Oh my God, it's it's at this level, it's got to turn." Um, I think that um, this is more important. So I look at this pairs trade, and so this is still suggesting that the bull market is intact uh, from from a pr pretty strong level here. Now this is interesting here. This is uh, the the big chart of the Fed internals here. And so the, these, these blue lines here is really what we use to try to uh, give people the heads up in terms of what's really going on behind the scenes, what's driving this market in terms of liquidity. Uh, and you can see here that on 525, this is really when the Fed started that next big push up here. You can see this. And a lot of this has been driven by that lending facility that they rolled out after the signature bank failure, all that stuff, all those failures. When they come up with those new credit facilities, the liquidity starts to come back into this market. The, the, the real break in liquidity came back here in October uh, with that whole Bank of England issue. But now we're the, the ball is really getting rolling here. And so we were able to see that about five days ahead of time before the market surge. So you can see here that the Fed internal surge first and then the market follows. So it does take a little bit of time, but almost always it finds its way into the market. Uh, and so I do think there's a good chance here we do get one more push up here in uh, before the July possibility of a high. And I, I say possibility because, uh, again, it's it's not it's not for sure. 
that that's going to be a high. Now, now you mentioned the 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 G two storm correct earlier in the show. I think you did, right? Yeah. You talked about that. You talked about that. You told me about that Friday, and we were talking about it in the air Friday too. Okay. Okay. So just all right. I just kind of trying to refresh myself here. Okay. So. Uh, this is really useful, and this is, you know, one of the core values that we have here at Wolf Trader is to uh, is innovation is a big one, but adaptability. So this is a new uh, indicator that I, I really came across about a year ago. Uh, uh, it was like March of 2022. The Fed had published. I found this report published by the Fed, and they talked about how storms turn the market. And so uh, we had seen this series of storms come across in, in, in April. Uh, and usually these big storms will turn the market. The fact that it didn't turn the market back here in, in April and May told me a lot about the bullish nature of this market because usually these storms can turn it. Uh, the fact that it didn't turn it uh, was a bullish sign to me. And then, of course, the Fed gets strong here and we have this run. Now, last Friday, a G2 storm pops up. This thing just pops up out of nowhere. Um, and so what does that mean? Well, Usually we get a couple of days heads up and these things, but this one just popped up uh, and it did stop the rally. I mean, it, uh, on Friday we saw that it closed weak and we have a little bit of a pause here in the rally. But that's not, you know, that's not a storm that I would say is a game changer. If I saw a G3 or a G4 storm come, uh, I would say that's a potential game changer. And if that G3 or G4 storm came in that first week of July that I'm looking at, I think I think you would have a a, a very legitimate shot at the top here. Uh, just to refresh the the memory of your viewers here, th this is a chart of the number of solar storms and the solar activity. This is a, an average chart. And so this was published by the Federal Reserve of Atlanta. This is from a, a research report that they did. But we're really into this trough into here where there's very, very light activity. And so this gives a lot of uh, potential, let's just say, for the S&P to continue to run higher because the storms are weaker. Once we get into October uh, or August, September, October, it starts to pick up. Uh, and so that's in October. If you remember, this is one of the worst months uh, for the S&P. So this is something that is new. Uh, I've tried to be adaptable and uh, it, it's really helped us because when you see the market turn like this, you can kind of get an idea of, you know, what's what's behind it. Is it is it is it a lar larger turn or is this just a storm that came up? I think in this case, we're just looking at a minor pullback here with this G2 storm. And I think it's likely to keep going up until that early, early July period. And um, we talked about longer term cycles too, uh, the Saturn cycles, uh, the Saturn cycles, Saturn just moved into the sign of Pisces. When this occurs, uh, the market tends to be bullish for quite some time. So if you look at this chart down here, this is 2023, this is 2024, this is 2025. We are really just in this early phases of this bull. I mean, this is like, if you look at this June here, this is, this is where we are. Uh, there's a little dip here in this model going down into this October. And then it, we're really up again for about another year, possibly a year and a half to left to this bull run. I think we're just getting started. And I think, you know, if we, if we tie this into what's going on with the Fed, I, I think this is tied largely to what's going on here with the Fed juice. The fact that this is where we are just starting now this liquidity cycle and things had gotten tight here back into this October. I think that that goes very well with uh, what we're looking at here on the longer term. I, I really think that this is, we're, we're going to be looking at a market that's going to be trying to head higher for for a while. I mean, and then after that, we'll see. Uh, but that's kind of what I see here. So I'm looking at about at least a year. Uh, and then short term, um, I think there's a chance that we could be looking at some type of an October high based upon the shorter term Saturn cycle. And that would go with that uh, inflation theory that I was talking about, that if we get that print in October of the 2%, I think that would be a, a very strong potential contrarian uh, indicator. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. So uh, do we have time to talk about gold here? Uh, yeah, we're going to start. I think we've only got a few seconds left to uh, okay. pay a few bills here. We've got 40 seconds now, and then when you'll come back, we'll talk about the gold. But you can start now. you got 30 seconds. How's that? Okay. So um, gold. Now, this is a uh, market that I have been bearish on uh, for a while. Even when we got up near those highs, I had been talking Oops. about. Time's okay, up. <laughs> Sorry. No we'll problem. Right no back, problem. folks. 877-927-6648. Shane Smolian coming back to talk about gold.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hey folks, you're back with TheWolfTrader.com talking to us about the yellow metal or gold. What's up, my friend? Okay, so... I'm going to go back to the Fed on this. This is this is a chart of the Fed use on 327, makes a sell. And there was a series of false breakouts here on gold. And I, I felt that this was a very bearish scenario. And I think the reason why these failed to follow through was because of the Fed. Now, in times of crisis, uh, the, you know, banks need money, right? So the little banks try to lend, uh, take loans from the big banks, and they're trying to, to raise capital all the time. The problem is that the big banks don't trust the little banks. So the Fed started this reverse repo facility. So now the big banks can loan directly to the Fed. Problem is the little banks got cut out of the system. And so little banks start to falter here because now the little banks can't get the money from the big banks. So what the Fed did, the Fed comes in and says, okay, don't worry about it. I'm going to loan you the amount of the treasuries at the original rate on your books, not the amount you're, that you're underwater. So the Fed completely took this risk out of the system that was it was horrible. I mean, if these banks had to lend to each other, you would start to see not only the, when the little bank failed, the big bank would be on the hook. So by the Fed coming in with these loan facilities, with the reverse repo facility, they've removed risk from the system. And that's bad for gold because gold is a haven that people go to when there's risk in the system. And the more the Fed comes in and removes the risk out of the system like this, the harder it's going to be for gold to go up. And I, and I made this comparison that gold needs to be – gold is – Gold is dependent upon an infinite fear curve to keep, keep to keep going up at this point. And so th this is a graph. As, as you approach the speed of light, you need infinite energy. 
I think that's what has to happen for gold to go up at this point. You need an infinite fear. You, ha you know, you're going to need massive bank collapses and failures for gold to start heading back up. But the Fed has done an excellent job here of removing the risk out of the system. So this is something that continues to evolve over time. And this is why I tell everybody we need to be adaptable and understand what's going on. So I think the Fed is a big risk to, to gold right now. Uh, and the more that the system becomes more stabilized, uh, the, 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 the worse it's going to be for gold. And just real quick, as an astrological note, Pluto uh, was in Aquarius. It's moving back into Capricorn now. That is better for the governments. Pluto and Capricorn is a very stable uh, element for the governments. That's when the whole QE thing started. So it's, it's back into Capricorn now. I think the governments are going to get control over this again. We're starting to see that. Uh, with the stock market, we're starting to see that 